All right, this video is an introduction to the Carillon Editor. This is a music tracker, music tracker software for the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Uh, it was written, it's, it was, it's, so it's used to make music for the Game Boy, and it was actually used to make music in at least one uh, officially licensed title, officially licensed Game Boy game. This is really cool software. Uh, I didn't find many resources on the internet explaining how to use it or tutorials. Uh, this is, I didn't, not, from what I can tell, not very popular program. And uh, it's, you know, it's much more common for me to see people using, uh, for example, LSDJ. LSDJ is a similar piece of software that allows people to write music on the Game Boy. And to clarify, when I say software, I mean, this is literally a Game Boy game. Like you, pl you run this on a Game Boy. Uh, I'm currently running it in an emulator, a Game Boy Color emulator. Uh, I use Same Boy because uh, Same Boy emulator is designed to be as close as possible to an actual Game Boy. Uh, but yeah, it's running on a Game Boy or Game Boy emulator, and uh, LSDJ is great. Uh, the difference with uh, the reason why someone would use this is because Carillon Editor is uh, specifically designed to allow you to easily import the music you write into an actual Game Boy game, uh, usually written in assembly language. Uh, whereas other other editor music editors such as LSDJ, they're just for making cool uh, songs, often really cool songs, but still just for making the songs and then just playing those songs, as opposed to importing them into a video game. I'm sure it's possible, but uh, this editor was specifically designed for that task, so it's really pretty convenient. Uh, a little less, uh, a little harder to use for the musician, but a lot easier to use for the programmer, for the game developer. Let's see here. So this is the this is the main screen. Uh, there's pretty much, there's basically one, one main menu in Carillon Editor. Uh, and this is it. This is the main menu and the only menu. And as you scroll down, there is, you just scroll through different sections of the main menu. All right. And it's pretty simple. It's a little, it was a little confusing to me at first, but it's uh, quite a simple piece of software. This is just an introduction to the menu, main menu and the different, uh, different screens in this uh in the uh this editor so this is the main menu there's also a block editor section here there is a sound editor section here and a block order list section here and i'm going to make different videos explaining what these are and then down below it's just commands that can be used in those different sections so for example up here we got the block editor we can we can go in here at a later time we'll go into the block editor and then if you scroll down here well these are the block editor commands that you can use and then up here you see there's a sound editor and down here there's a sound editor commands and then uh, the block order list is actually pretty pretty basic uh, there's no commands down here but then finally there's uh, there's like uh, what is it just really high level commands to uh, load load your music from uh, from the save like <laughs> what is it SRAM it's the uh, from the cartridge and save your music onto the cartridge so, you know, when you're done working on music for the day, you s save it. And uh, then when you start it back up, when you turn your Game Boy back on, the next time you can load it. So, yeah. Let's see here. So, you can you just scroll up and down. Uh, to select one of these, you press the Start button. And you can quick, quick scroll between the different sections by pressing left and right. So, I'm back at the top here. I can scroll to the block commands by pressing right. Sound commands, press right. And then down at the bottom by pressing right again, and you can jump back up by pressing left and right. So there's lots of little shortcuts in here to make it easier. Uh, the A and B buttons don't do anything. A lot of the a lot of the stuff in this editor in this tracker software is done with the start button to uh, what's the word? Accept. Like you press start to uh, like commit the command, and then you press select to go back. And it's a little weird at first, but uh, I think it does help. It frees up the A and B buttons to do other commands, and it kind of <laughs> it helps prevent me from uh, accidentally typing, typing, pressing the wrong button at times. All right. All right. So yeah. Let's start, 
Let's start diving into the different uh, different modes, the different screens, and making music. So there's three different sections, um, and they're uh, let's see, how do I explain this? I think I think if you've seen Tracker software before, then uh, this will be pretty familiar. <laughs> I had never used the Tracker software at all, so this was all new to me. So the first step in making music is to create a sound. And uh, this was a little, this was quite surprising to me at first because I dove right into the uh, you know I just wanted to start typing in notes. Oh, I know uh, I know how to write music. Whatever. Uh, let's type uh, C D E and then press play, and no sound came out. Well, that's because I didn't make any. I call them instruments. Uh, this editor calls them sounds. So the first step is to make sounds and use sounds uh, to uh, play in a block. You make you use sounds in a block. And the block is where you type in the notes. And then uh, the block is eh, is where you type in notes. And you get about, uh, eh, we'll say, approximately four measures to work with in a block. And after you make a block or a series of blocks, you then assemble them all. You play them in a certain order in the block order list. So you make sounds, you play sounds in a block, and then you piece all the blocks together in a block order list to make a complete song. Because, you know, each block is going to be like... Uh, a sound is just going to be an eh, so it's just like an instrument sound. A block is going to be maybe one measure of music, and the block order list is going to represent the whole song, playing multiple measures in a, in series. 